Hello, and welcome to Piano Tech Radio Hour, the weekly bridge to the future of the Piano Tech community. I'm David Anderson. And I'm Ethan Janney. And we're here to ask great questions, and then we'll shut up and listen to some of the authorities, experts, and most outstanding personalities in our little world of pianos. So, put on your best set of headphones, and let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome to Piano Tech Radio Hour. Well, great to see you all once again. See Wayne Ferguson over there. How's it going, Wayne? Although he probably can't hear me yet. Still connecting to audio. So, yeah, very great to see you all again, yet again this week. Um, We'll, we'll let people filter in, but I'll give you a little bit of a preview for today. Um, I think I just want to touch base with folks. So who's whoever's interested in kind of speaking up, saying uh, how things are going for you and, uh, you know, problems, questions, whatever to put to the group. I think uh, we'll have a fun discussion today. So um, think about if you want to chat or share or connect here today. I'd uh, love, love to do a little bit of that. Um, in the coming weeks, I have uh, definitely a couple of interesting guests coming up. One in, um, one a repeat of Danny Canetop, who's a guitar maker, and he's going to come in. I, and I think we're going to focus on hand tools, which is kind of an interesting overlap between uh, what he does and what we do. And uh, his mentor, actually, Michael Darnton, is going to join us very soon as well and uh, talk about being a violin craftsperson. And he's been doing that for many, many years. So I, I think we'll find that pretty interesting. I actually spent some time not working in the workshop of a violin repair person, uh, but working in his sort of shop his office basically i was helping him with some accounting things actually but right right down the street from me here where i live in in uh, elmhurst illinois there's a long time i don't know 40 50 year uh, violin you know he rents violins does repairs all kinds of uh, stuff with violins and i got to spend some time with him over the course of several months um, it's, it's very interesting to see the similarities and differences between that industry and our industry, definitely something worth chatting about. So looks like we got people filtered in so far. And I think what we'll do today is I'll give a little bit of intro and then maybe reach out to folks who are, who are joining and see if we want to chat about anything uh, that's relevant of the day. So for those of you just joining us and those of you watching on uh, YouTube and Facebook, this Piano Tech Radio Hour uh, we bring you some very interesting folks from the piano industry and overlapping realms, uh, sometimes pianists, uh, sometimes piano store owners, sometimes, as I said, uh, people who make other instruments or something relevant to what we do. And this uh, is sponsored by Piano Technicians Masterclasses, which offers cutting edge instruction from piano industry masters without leaving your home. And... Uh, yeah, we've been running this for well over a year at this point, started in the pandemic and still going strong. So uh, uh, at the risk of picking on people, well, first of all, I have I see a couple of people that I might want to chat with. Um, but before I pick out on people, is there anybody that feels uh, interested in chatting with me a little bit before I pick on you? <laughs> anybody want to say hi? Uh, you can raise your physical hand or your digital hand and and uh, and say something. Let's see here. Anybody? Wayne. Good. I was going to pick on you anyways. <laughs> All right. Let's make sure you can get unmuted here. How's it going? Hi. How are you doing? Very good, man. Very good. It's good to see you. Thanks for joining. So the uh, problem I'm having, uh, I got two rebuilding jobs and uh, I uh, tried to order parts. And uh, from uh, Renner America, uh -huh. everything's, everything is back ordered. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I've, I've been hearing just there's all sorts of interesting things going on with uh, 
I don't know, industry and, and logistics and, you know, things that have been going on since the pandemic. Um, and then maybe even some things that aren't, that you would think are affected by the pandemic, but they're just uh, somewhat unrelated. Um, there, there, I know that there's shortages. I don't know if there's shortages. I know the price of wood, I think, went up really high. And then uh, it was difficult to for people to, to do construction projects. But I, I noticed that there's, there's sort of this issue where of kind of a mi mix up about how much people need uh, in their inventory or not. So, so when people get low on inventory, then they tend to order extra and, and then they order extra and they get extra inventory and then they don't need to order for a while. So there's this kind of like lag in between distributors and the people that are getting, um, you know, the products that are being distributed. So where are you ordering your, your parts from? Well, it's just that I did, I, I did two quotes for red interaction, like complete back action, everything. Uh -huh. So I voted on it, then I went to order, but uh, Ch uh, 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 Chip um, gave me a, uh, an overview of what was going on. Mm -hmm. uh, but I can't remember exactly what it was, but all right. I know is now, um, but there's other suppliers that are available, you know, there's Brooks and there's all kinds of others. Right, right. Uh, just that I just quoted on the renter and uh, these are both uh, Steinway actions. So, so that's why I just want to be able to, you know, go that route. And, um, and so it's just going to be a bit of a delay now. So I, so all, all my work is going to be switched. So uh -huh. I'm just doing other things. So, um, but I do have to share something. Yeah. In the pandemic, um, <clears throat> I bought a, <clears throat> I bought a, a BMW X5. Um, that sounds fun. In 2018. And in the pandemic, you know, we, I didn't drive it for about three or four months. It sat in the driveway. Uh -huh. And then once we got started back, I started going back to work. And um, well, what happened was I started to have electrical problems. And then mm -hmm. the, the thing went haywire. So I went to uh, my mechanic where I go, he took it apart and it was infested, but with uh, animal damage, mice. What? Yeah. Whoa. I had the car for, um, uh, I think, nine months. And uh, appraiser just called me and uh, uh, it, they thought they had it down and they came back and they just, they just wrote it off. It's going to the dump. What? A BM? <laughs> what? Yeah. How the heck, how the heck does that happen? What is this? Was this going on before you bought it and it, it it's developed? A or it's you... a possibility that went on, but the thing is it, apparently uh, the, a lot of vehicles that are parked for some time, mice will get up inside. And so there was uh, like all kinds of damage and they went right for the wiring harness, the, uh, um, uh, you know, it was, it was quite remarkable, the damage they did. But wow. The BMW is, it's like a spaceship inside. Uh, so there's bundles of wires to replace the uh, BMW wiring harness is going to be $20,000. Holy cow. And yeah. So just incredible amount of damage. And uh, so I just warning anyone, if you got a vehicle sitting around, because uh, we see we see mice most damage in pianos. Right. I, I am doing some service on the Yamaha M1s, and the mice are going in there, and they're eating the wires. I'm talking to some other colleagues, so they're also having issues where uh, the mice are eating some of the wires uh, inside the pianos. And wow. um, so... So just be aware that this can happen to your car. So, so what, what exactly do you get some sort of, is insurance cover this? Like what is yeah. Going? yeah. There's apparently animal damage, uh, part of insurance. It's a known thing. If you start doing Google search, but I'm just saying this because we are in the industry where we see right. mouse damage in pianos or from years right. ago, mm -hmm. uh, it's apparently a thing in vehicles and especially through the pandemic where a lot of vehicles have been parked. Right. So, yeah, um, yeah, I never would have thought, yeah, it's interesting. Um, like, uh, it seems like, uh, they've, they've been able to do more damage to a BMW in a few months than, than you might see in a piano. I, I mean, I'm sure they could really damage a piano, but it seems like that kind of thing happens over time. People don't really realize what's going on. And well, because it has that cavity in the bottom, you know, 
of an upright piano. That's I think that's typically where you see mice is the bottom caveat of an upright piano. It's just kind of settle there in the bottom and do their thing, I guess. Some of the materials they use in the vehicles uh, are what do you call it eco friendly, and apparently there's some stuff that the insulation they like the taste of it. So they're eating oh. this insulation, and it's also it also works a per perfect uh, nesting material. Plus all the foam lining, you know, because they spray the uh, the body cavity in the factory with this sort of thin foam, and so they've eaten all that foam, right? And mm. um, so, but anyway, it's uh, I just want to share that to yeah. to warn people to be careful. Yeah, thanks for sharing. Yeah, yeah. That, that's that's Ooh. very annoying. So, what kind of work are you doing? Um, Otherwise, are you are you going? You're going out in the field. Clearly, you're vaccinated, and you're not too concerned about that. But you're doing some shop work on the weekends, or what's your schedule like? No, I'm doing a lot of studio work right now. So there's uh, a couple of recording studios I tune for. So they're all booked back to back. And mm -hmm. there's one studio that has uh, two uh, two pianos, and uh, they have a, a CF3S and a, a C7 that I restored both of those. But there's another artist that came in. Uh, Catherine, uh, what was Catherine? Catherine Wilson. She's a very talented uh, artist up here, and she had a quartet, and she she, uh, she has a deal with Busendorfer, so they brought a Busendorfer in. So it was kind of unique because in the studio there's these three pianos. So it was like the stars were all lined up, mm. and uh, so I had a chance to. Uh, uh, and this project took uh, three weeks, so the piano was being used twice a week. So there was. Some people coming in using the uh, CF. A few days later, some were using the nine foot or uh, sorry the uh, seven, and then and then her using the uh, the Busendorfer. So the engineers had a real treat on uh, sonically. They were hearing all the different tones of the instruments, and uh, but it was good for uh, comparison. Yeah, uh, yeah. So it was yeah. very interesting. Fascinating. Yeah. yeah, I'm I'm realizing that this is the these are the few days there uh, that uh, unrelated to what we were just talking about. But these are a few few days that uh, the tech convention is going on. The PTG convention is going on in Florida. Um, and uh, I'm curious, uh, is, it, is anyone it doesn't look like anyone's here is tuning in from Florida. <laughs> I'm guessing you're having a busy time. But did anybody think about heading heading out to that um, has specific decision not to or um you know anything i know i know personally i i just was unable to because uh my schedule is packed with other things and it would have disrupted my family time but um but yeah anybody else um anybody else thought about going or or would have looked forward to going if if not for uh, something in the way there i'm actually gonna i'm actually gonna ask a couple folks here who i haven't talked to too much see if they're willing to chat a little bit um, I'll take you off the spotlight, Wayne, here, so you don't feel self-conscious. But um, yeah, let me just pick on some people here. Unless anybody, okay. Well, I heard from, I heard from Susan in the chat here a little bit. Susan, how are you doing? Are you are you willing to have a little, come up or or at least come on audio and say something, or are you busy? Audio, yeah, right. audio, audio. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, How's it audio. going over there? I haven't been feeling very well. Really? What's going I'm, on? I'm vaccinated, but I, I just don't, uh, a lot of fatigue. Mm -hmm. And I think that some Delta's wandering around. Mm. Uh, well, I have, I have to say, I was traveling in Puerto Rico uh, about, I guess it's a month ago at this point, or three weeks ago or something like that. I did pick up something. I got sick. It lasted a week or a week and a half, even if you if you really counted the very small beginnings and the endings of it. It went through my whole respiratory system. Yeah, started my sinuses, went all the, into my lungs, and ended with a cough. Uh, it I didn't feel too terrible except for the first couple of days. It was not COVID. Um, it was just something else. I got tested multiple times, but I also think I got the sense that just bugs are going around because people are starting to mix and mingle, and you know other germs are having an opportunity to hop on and off of us and have have I a party. I think a lot of what we assume is just nothing much is because we're vaccinated mm. and we're just getting a little hint of COVID, but it seems so minor. 
And probably we can't even test for it because our viral, viral load just isn't big enough to notice. Mm. So I wouldn't be too sure about what you had some. But if it's minor like that, that's actually a good thing. It'll improve your immunity. It's like having another shot. Yeah, suppose, suppose. I went, I did, um, I did a self-test that gave me results within 10 minutes. It took me about 20 minutes to make sure I verified how I actually administered it, but uh -huh. <laughs> it gave me results in like in 10 minutes. And then I did do a PCR test at a lab, which I'm pretty, I feel pretty confident that, I, I don't know, pretty confident. <laughs> I should just use the stats, right? I don't know what the stats were with the with the results, there are false and, uh, positives and negatives and so on and so forth with with all of these tests. But I felt good about having it in a lab and done professionally. Um, yeah. I was surprised. I surprised at where I could stick this long Q-tip type thing in my <laughs> into my sinuses <laughs> when I did it myself. Like, oh, the, my sinuses go that direction. That's interesting. <laughs> I used so much ginger that I think I probably killed it out. That could account for a negative test. Yeah, could be, could be. I mean, uh, I'll say I, I have not, I have not looked into the details, you know, consistently around these testing. I did study biology. This was a number of years ago, of course. Um, but it, it is interesting to look if you if you look in the um, if you look them up online, you look at these tests. Uh, you'll see what are the false negative and false positive uh, ranges of these things, and it, it's. It's uh, at least for me and looking at them, they there was a lot less accuracy than I might have expected to see. It, you know, of course, they're they're coming up with these things right on the on the last minute and and very quickly. Um, but but uh, you know, if if you run the numbers and you think, oh, okay, so out of this many people, this many people would have a false positive, or this many people would have a false negative. Uh, it's uh, it's not insignificant numbers, put it that I way. I think uh, that's true of a lot of testing. And uh, it's just not an exact science. No, so I mean, science sort of... isn't even exact science. Yeah, <laughs> you can't really it... prove anything. Uh, you can only really prove things false. You can't prove things it, true. It so. kind of gives you a general notion, but it's, it's not really to be depended on as the right. final word. So, right. so I'm staying home. I just... Uh, Oregon isn't a hot spot for it, but I mean, it's still all over the place and our cases did double in the last two weeks. So, oh, wow. yeah. I mean, and then in the South, it's just all over the place. So, Susan, I times to a, be, go ahead. I have a question. Uh, uh, um, my daughter, I just actually want to mention my daughter had uh, a Pfizer shot and she had a, a long reaction the last almost two weeks. And it turned out, um, my daughter, she has an issue with uh, anaphylactic kind of issue with peanut butter and certain things. And uh, I did take her to emergency twice. And, and they were happy to see her. Uh, but they said, some people, this happens. There's a longer sort of a little bit of a side effect. And so she hasn't had her second shot yet. But she, they said that they want her to wait a bit longer. But now new studies have come out. They're getting the second shot. Uh, there's not that much of uh, a reaction, but but some people, um, I had another friend that had Pfizer, and after I think three weeks, she had a, an issue with her arm. It got infected and it swollen. She had to go in, and she was having a reaction. So, um, uh, but they said in some people this will happen, but it's not um, uh, it's uh, not to worry. It's kind of everyone acts a little bit different. Uh, how's but, your daughter uh, now? Well, she's okay now, but it, it did take, was. yeah, it did take almost like three weeks for it to start to feel somewhat normal. And she was a bit afraid at first, you know. So, they um, say if you uh, leave a longer interval between the first and second Pfizer that you end up with better results. Uh, yes, they, they have, they have mentioned that too. Yes. Um, it's because the British wanted all the people to get the first shot first. And so they had a long time before they could get the second shot to people. And it turns yeah. out that works a lot better. Yeah. Well, anyway, I just want to, I just hope you feel better and uh, just don't worry too much. Just, uh, you know, you just have to, you know, it's, maybe it's going to be a little bit more longer uh, effect. Right. 
Well, I plan to just kind of uh, take it easy. And uh, it's a certainly a fine excuse not to work for people for a while and yeah. give myself a few months, tidy up things at home, do stuff that's been put off. Yeah. And, and just kind of set back and wait to see what happens. So, yeah, I hear you. I hear Canada's sense. done really well with the vaccinations. Well, it, yes, but at first we, we were we were on bottom of the list, but it's it, it's worked out now. You turned it Thanks. around in a hurry, boy. Yeah, well, yeah. Canada then, yeah. always pulls through and makes us look silly down here in the United States. <laughs> 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 and they're so nice about it. Yeah, far more rational and <laughs> and reasonable and and. I lived natured. there for nine yeah. years, you know. Yeah, yeah, you can count on you wow. can count on Canada. Um, okay. Well, yeah. So, so isn't there some interesting stuff about the? Of course, none of us are experts in <laughs> public health, but uh, there's some interesting stuff about uh, about what's going on with folks. Um, and and I'm I'm curious, actually, if you don't mind going back to you, Wayne. I feel like you. So I had this session a couple of weeks ago with um with danny cane top and he uh was the one who makes guitars i feel like i saw you in the beginning but then maybe you dropped off were you able to catch that one i thought i thought you might find it interesting because you're you work on guitars right yes i do yeah i i couldn't i had to go out so i was i was i uh i was supposed to be at a job and i forgot about it tonight uh Jennifer said where are you i went oh i'm late <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. If so I've anyway, I, I, miss, I missed that. Yes, but okay. I, yeah, I did mention before that all I really want to do is build guitars all the time. Really? Like, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. You would have loved this one. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. So, well, yeah, yeah, he'll be back. So, so you bring your questions along, and um, yeah, yeah. We, I mean, just, just, just uh, to, to give a brief overview, um, you know, he uh, he studied violin making for a few years. And, um, you know, kind of got his bearings down with that. He, he I actually have known him s since I was younger in high school. He's the younger brother of the drummer in my high school uh, rock band. And um, his dad was an architect. And, you know, as, as a little bit of a project together, um, I saw the first guitar, electric guitar that they built together. So they built this electric car guitar together. And, you know, it's kind of a fun father son project and you know didn't think too much of it um and then he went off and he studied classical guitar in college i think he went to suny purchase or something like this and just figured oh that's his career path and then uh you know he, it just didn't it wasn't quite the right fit for him and and he start, started studying design and then he went and studied with his violin maker and I was I was just very fascinated to watch his progress because I never would have thought he would have become a guitar maker of all things. And he has gotten so serious about it. And these guitars are, you know, tens of thousands of dollars. He's got a waiting list of, you know, I think it's multiple years if you want to get a guitar from him. And he just kind of has this has this nice his little workshop out there around the Los Angeles area. And uh he designs them, he builds them, he customizes them to uh, the player's specifications. And uh, I, I, they sound really good, but he's also does a great job of making visually beautiful um, instruments as well. So what is his name? Uh, his name's Danny Canetop. Danny Canetop. Yeah. I feel it's, like. Can you spell I, the last name? I don't know. Oh, oh, yeah, that's right. That's a very, it's got a weird, very weird spelling. Um, let me hear it. Put it in the chat. Everyone. D A N N Y K O E N T O P P. Yeah. K O N. K O E N. K. K O E N T O P P. Like Cohen Top with two P's. Okay. I got it. Okay. Thank you. Perfect for Dr. Google because there aren't any others. Yeah, you probably won't find many others. <laughs> uh, you. Did you catch that one, Susan? Did you appreciate that? I don't know. I, I thought uh, maybe some people don't really care about guitar making. But uh, no, I think I all enjoy that one, but I haven't come and uh, I was busy with winery concerts, actually, mm. and outdoors, you know. Do they pay you in wine or what? 
<laughs> oh well, no, actually, yesterday I bought a bottle of wine from one of them. <laughs> oh, come on! <laughs> it's fair. concerts that normally would be held indoors, but we're not doing them indoors. So, uh, yesterday's was a chamber uh, festival, which we've held for twenty years. Uh, last year we didn't hold it at all, and mm. this year there were five or six held out at the winery, and Very where cool. people are sitting around in a great big open barn-like building, which had once was dairy barn, and bringing chairs and having picnic tables and drinking wine and hearing our chamber music and seeing each other again. Very, very nice. That sounds great. Um, I just remembering tangentially related when I was in college, uh, I was in a rock band as well. And uh, I drank alcohol but i was trying not to drink too much you know i tried to drink water and and you know and it was just the bar you play at these bars and they just wanted to pay you in beer you know like <laughs> oh, can, can you, even if it's just the 10 15 bucks that you could have paid me instead of giving the beers could you just give me some cash like i don't want i don't want to be forced to drink as much as i can to feel like i got my you know i i got my value out of this performance or something <laughs> But I don't know. With the winery, it sounds fancier. Like I don't know if they could pay it's, you in wine. It's a nice it place. It's out in just maybe a quarter hour south of my town, and out in the country. A lovely place. So I'll just say I know there are a couple of people just jumped on, and I think there might have been an issue with the link. Um, and so for those of you that are just joining us, we're just chit chatting a little bit, reaching out and saying hi to some of the folks in the peanut gallery, see how things are going. Um, we talked with Wayne Ferguson up front a little bit. Um, we're talking a little bit with Susan Klein, see how it's going. We, we uh, got a little bit on a, on a COVID tangent, talking about our health issues and beliefs and things like that. And, you know, uh, and then uh, we were viewing some of the master classes that we've, or the radio hours that we've done over the past couple of weeks. Um, but uh, yeah, did anybody also, I, I got a chance to talk to Carl Lieberman when I saw him in person about the session uh, with the woman, uh, her name's Jan DeSoto in, in Puerto Rico. Um, I found that was, that was also kind of like, a, you know, a little bit, off off tangential to what we typically do but i found it very interesting to chat with her a little bit any of anybody here see that one and have any feedback on that or thoughts um about that session i think what i got from carl was um you know he enjoyed it but maybe it would have been cool for for us to dive in a little bit deeper like look at the pianos or talk you know get get a little bit more technical or something like that i um, always like looking at the pianos and especially hearing the pianos Right, right. Uh, I really value that uh, little subscription that I do so that I can go back and see all those ones that I sometimes had to miss. It's awesome. nice to know those are there waiting for me. Good, good. Glad you appreciate it. Yeah, I think that's um, that's been really valuable to be able to have. And, you know, we're sort of building this library now so you can go back. And um, the other thing is... Uh, the other thing is we actually have released a couple as podcast episodes and i think we'll we'll be doing that again here in the new future i don't have an exact date we'll start releasing it but uh, i think that'll be nice as well just to be able to be driving in the car between appointments or something and you know turn on the piano tech radio hour and hear hear a past session or, or one that you missed so um I don't know if anybody thinks that that sounds like a good idea or not. <laughs> it's good to get feedback before you dive into something. But um, would you listen to Piano Tech Radio Hour in your car on the podcast, Wayne? Oh, yeah, yes, I would. Yeah. Cool. Um, All right. Cool. Yeah. I, I wish I could redo a couple of ideas. So. Because <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what to expect in the beginning. I, I oh, yeah, no yeah. Idea, right. So now, okay, well, okay, I'll have to change yeah. a few things or, yeah. We're all but, yeah. Just... Yeah, we're all just winging it here. I was, Don't I was worry. trying to actually. I was traveling once. And I was trying to get a a, a feed to, to be able to listen live, but mm -hmm. the cell signal was not good. But I was trying to listen while I was in transit. It just didn't right. work. Right, yeah. right, yeah. Sometimes that can be rough, especially yeah. if you're trying to talk or, or interact. The, the the you you can it's is it's, I found recently I've tried to be on some Zoom calls while I'm walking around on my phone or something and. Maybe it's just the service I have, but you know, 
I can do, I can participate a little bit, but it's, it doesn't quite work on a zoom call. I see, uh, I see Calvin over there. Uh, it joined us like a little bit late. You feel like chatting, man. I, I have, I feel like I haven't interacted with you too much recently. Well, how are things going? Feel like unmuting yourself? Uh, yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, Malaysia is getting a uh, high peak at the pandemic. Oh, really? So, because most of the time is is like night, uh, two p.m. So sometimes I was asleep. So I didn't. Uh, I will buy. Uh, sometime I go back to listen to the the, the re replay. Ah, and where? Tell tell everyone where you are. Yeah, I'm. I'm from Malaysia. Uh, uh, the, uh, somewhere in Asia. So now uh, my country now is uh, uh, having a hard time on pandemic. So mm. uh, since then, I think I've been cut down the work. I had to go stay at home mm. for quite some time. Uh, mm. So uh, trying to uh, mostly doing work on the workshops. So uh, we did done a few uh, major fixing piano during this uh, pandemic time. Uh huh. Yeah. Hey, you do, so, did, was that a question? I didn't quite say, say that one more time. I missed exactly the last. You no, said you're no, doing just, you're doing fixing piano. It's like you're doing a lot of rebuilding and repairs and things like that right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Re, uh, refurbishing, re, repairing. Major is repairing. Got over it. Here. Uh, so most of the events uh, tuning is uh, already two years doesn't have any event going on because it's not allowed uh, pandemic. Mm. So uh, that's the situation now in, in, in this time. Wow. But I'm still uh, having some project going on at my workshop. So, so I know for us in the United States about a year ago, is when it was not great. Well, I guess it started to get a little bit better over the summertime, but you know that was like the middle of the the pandemic. And was it also bad there a year ago, or did it did it get delayed? Uh, it... It's get get delayed. This uh, this I think from the previous uh, peak. This is the biggest time with the with the with the delta and alpha around. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, um, but hope just hope things get well soon. Right, right, definitely. Yeah, it's yeah. just a reminder that uh, not only are there different levels of severity in different parts of the planet, um, but yeah, that things are complicated, and you know who who knows how things whip back around or whatever we'll have to deal with. We're crossing our fingers and and trying to return back to normal as much as we can, but. Um, it's good to be careful. So yeah, I think Calvin, it's like middle of the night there. So wow, thanks for joining us. It's an honor and a privilege to have you <laughs> have you participate. Really appreciate you being here. Uh, Calvin, I want to apologize for the rich countries that we didn't send you enough vaccine. We really should have done that for a lot of places. It would have helped a great deal. Maybe, maybe we'll learn our lessons. Yeah. yeah, but uh, the, the vaccination things, I think um, it's all leave to the government here. So it's, it's quite a slow process right now. Have but you we, been... we get, get, uh, I'm not yet taking any vaccine, so that's wow. why I will stay at home all the time. Wow, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah very good point, Susan. I hope you can get Susan. some soon. Yeah, yeah. hopefully. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, thank you for sharing. That's a very good point, Susan. Uh, it's kind of been uh, <laughs> the whole thing's been a. I, I want. I, I don't usually swear, so I want to. In the spirit of David Anderson, I will. I'll say the whole thing's been kind of a shit show across the whole globe, <laughs> in terms of you know people figuring out what to do and whether they're gonna you know focus on helping others or or themselves or whatever. It's been. Ooh, it's been quite of an adventure. We know a lot more, but we still have a lot of catching up to do. Right. Because there's, we can't get rid of this until we get rid of it everywhere. And it doesn't matter if they don't have a ton of money to buy the vaccine. They still need to get it. 
Right. And it's in everybody's best interest too. It's a very good point. Um, I'm looking at, uh, I'm curious if Steven Buker can hear us. I'm looking at this like grand ceiling. I'm, I'm sorry, Steven, even, even if you can't, if you, if you're not going to be interacting with some of the spotlight your video, <laughs> there he is. Where are you in a church or something? Yeah. I've been working in the church for about the last year and a half doing things. Oh, wow. Mostly organ, re most, mostly organ repair, actually. Oh, right wow. Right now I'm working. And this particular church got hit by lightning about a month and a half ago. So I'm doing sound systems and streaming, getting all that stuff replaced. Oh. And we're getting, and we're getting a new electronic organ out of it because it blew up the old one completely. Wow. So, Did it, is that like covered by insurance for the, for the church? Or, or, yes, uh... yes, it is. Yes. Oh, very right cool. Right now the sound system is all my stuff that I had laying in the basement. So it... <laughs> And and where are you where are you located? This is uh, Zionstone ECC. We're up near Craggersville, Pennsylvania, which is north of Northampton, okay. which again is north north of Allentown. Okay. Lehigh Valley Lehigh Valley area. Okay, got it, got it. Yeah, I mean Pennsylvania is huge. So is it? It's a. Uh, is it sort of in the the center, the west, yeah, or the east? Uh, and this is east. Where I live is about two miles from the Delaware River, right? So okay. How how long does it take you to get to Philadelphia? Oh, about an hour and a half at most. Okay, so not not too far away from Philly. Yeah, exactly. And then, how much time are you spending working on the instruments at this church? Well, I my my home church is in Eastern Pennsylvania, and I, I spent uh, six or seven months starting with COVID because mm. as soon as everything shut down, I had nothing to do. Mm. So I was rebuilding rebuilding the pipe organ there. Wow, doing a lot, you know, re rebushing con uh, keyboards and things like that, and uh, and but here I, I've been, you know, I, I had I was setting up an electronic instrument to replace the Allen, which was failing anyway, hmm. and uh, so now I have that fully operational. So I have an instrument until we get the new one in. Congratulations! But but I, you know, I've been working on months here, basically doing all kinds of things. Where did you pick up skills and organ repairs and? And, and things like that is that basically basically talking to the experts asking questions and, and, and watching people do things but i've been doing this since the late 60s so it's okay you pick up a lot of information okay so every once in a while you'd come across someone who knew what they were doing with organs and you spend some time with them pick their brain maybe exactly make a phone exactly. call when you needed to some help with something and a good portion of it is simply common sense okay it, it's mechanical Piano stuff is also common sense, but very complicated. <laughs> yeah, you got to be careful with common sense when it comes to instruments. It's like, you know, I mean, a good example, a good example of like a, a very, very rookie thing, probably, probably lot, not a lot of people would fall for, but like, okay, well, how come all the hammers are crooked in this piano? We got to straighten these out. Like what? <laughs> you know, like, Oops. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, within re within reason. Within course. reason. <laughs> right. But 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 a pipe organ, I try to keep with the original design as much as possible. So it's basically you know replacing or you know re re reconditioning what's there. Got it. So did you get a chance to listen to a couple of these recent ones we did with with Danny the guitar maker and and. Uh, and Jan, the the uh, sort of hotel and Steinway Society yes. purveyor in uh, Puerto Rico. W what did you think of those? Like, uh, what did you find good about them? What, what would you have improved? Like, uh, well, just, just yeah. fascinating, con fascinating conversations. Hearing what that, what these other people are doing, it's mm -hmm. very nice. Especially the Puerto Rico one. You know that that was that was excellent. Right. Have you ever been to Puerto Rico? I yeah, long long time ago. Back it's time when to I was go touring back. With, Back when I was touring with the studio band of the Army Field Band, back in the old days. Oh wow, you're an Army Band guy. Yeah, well, I'm a French horn player, so I've been doing oh. a lot of that. Oh, nice, very cool. And then of course, of course, I've been organist for the last twenty years, so that uh, almost oh, thirty. Oh, so years you now. play it as well? You're not just a oh yeah, yeah. Guy. oh yeah. Okay, awesome. Yeah, and every seems... instrument I've, every instrument in every church I've ever played on, I've always improved it in some way. Okay, according to you. But anyway, I'm just kidding. Well, no, according to people <laughs> listen to it. I'm just kidding. No, but it sounds like you're also you you your your church. So you you probably your church. The, you go to a church nearby, and that organ's probably 
the best one because you're just always playing it? Or is it the yeah, worst uh, one? Is it like uh, the cobbler's well, children have no shoes? The church I'm a member of uh, is a, like a 17 rank molar, and uh, it was ready to be condemned 25 years ago, and it's still working quite nicely. <laughs> okay, nice. You know, it just works, and, and I still want to. Uh, I still need to rewire it, get rid of the cloth covered wire, which wow. uh, uh, the, the people that inspect it always hate to see. Very, yeah. very much of a fire hazard. Yeah, yeah. What's the deal with that? They used to. Th I guess it's a slight insulator, but it's also very. Um, oh, it's an excellent flammable. insulator, but but they're all 30, 40, 50 years old. Right. And so you're getting you get aging. Right. Yeah, because you'll see cloth type wire. Do they still use cloth type wire? I mean, I'm thinking on some instrument cables and things like that. You'll see, like kind of like a cloth coated wire, but I guess it's probably a very special flame retardant cloth by this day and age. Exactly. Exactly. Right. That stuff and it's doesn't also, catch fire at all. Right. And then also the, and then even if the cloth doesn't catch fire, it deteriorates. So, so it wears away and then yeah, the bare, yeah. the bare wires get exposed. That makes sense. Yeah. Especially if you have a bundle of wire that moves quite a bit or get, uh, over time. You, right. You problem. You're getting problems in the middle of that harness someplace. And all you can do is run a new wire beside it. You know, yeah. That makes you're sense. You're never going to find it. So I'm replacing all of that. Cool. And of course, I also tune the pianos at the churches. So that, uh, yeah, if I'm you got play, it. You got a corner I, on I, the you got a corner it, on the keyboard market over there. And... If I'm going to play it, it better sound good. <laughs> you know, it's just that simple. That's why I started tuning. I figured, man, if I'm going to play this thing, you know, and uh, and I can't afford to have somebody else tune it, then I better be good, good at this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and on top of that, I save the church's money, which they always appreciate. Ah, nice, nice. Wait, wait! You're not making a bundle off the church. I'm store? not. I'm, you doing no, this for free? No, no. Come on! <laughs> only, only is that only part of your tithe? Yet. That's part of only, your tithe, basically. Okay, I got but it. only the churches I work for would I do that for. Everybody else is going to pay money. <laughs> okay, got it. That sounds fair. Well, thanks for checking in and saying hi. I'm glad you were able to able to do that. <laughs> yeah, I've heard most of the events over the last year and a half, so it's good. Oh, very good. Yeah, it's always good to kind of check in with folks and say hi. I don't know that we've ever chatted, right? We have not. Yeah. My my, my first event actually with uh, was the uh, the one with David Anderson in his tuning. Oh, uh, okay. Which is two years ago, maybe three years. It, ago. And it was like a like a one of the master classes. This was, was a full master full master uh, class. Yeah. yeah, I learned yeah. a lot from that. Nice. Just, yeah. just amazing teacher. Yeah, that's a great. That's a great session and it's great to have it on record i'm i'm now so a little bit of update on you know i've got this uh, piano tuning business in new york city and I, I i currently live in chicago and i've traveled around a little bit but i well, i was in new york back around you know two, 2010 to 2015 or so and i was doing my phd in biology and neuroscience and and I started to get busy, so I started to take these other technicians on and show them the ropes, and then they, they would tune for a larger business I have called Floating Piano Factory. And, uh, you know, that thing's still going now, um, and I get new people on board. So I just got a new new guy on board, and it's really useful to say, hey, go go watch David Anderson's tuning concert, you know, just to get hmm. get your bearings, get, get know the ropes, you know, along with some other things. But... Uh, yeah, so glad he was able to to do that, do that for us. Yeah, uh, but yeah, thanks for thanks for joining. So you heard about the radio hour because you had already gotten in on things through the master class. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, I'm interested in piano. I yeah. don't have enough knowledge to do a good job, which is why I'm watching these uh, the experts speak. It's great, great learning experience. Awesome. All right. What what is the thing that I mean? Clearly, you're being a little bit modest, but but what's the thing that if you if you could really learn more about it, you know, you'd feel a lot a lot more confident, or, or like what's the place in pianos that that you would love to shore up your your skills or knowledge in? There's well, all one. of it actually, but I would say more work uh, uh, setting up the hammers properly. Okay. In other words, how they're shaped and how they're set, you know, what right. to listen for and how not to do something wrong. Right. You know. Yeah, voicing I've seen over and over again is something that uh, people can appreciate, not only content on, but like multiple perspectives, and and uh, it's also something that's a little bit, it's it's I think in the absence of working 
in a factory or perhaps like a, a sales uh, center, like a, like a store for pianos, it's really difficult for people to feel like they have an outlet to practice on voicing. Like people don't like exactly. to do it on yeah. pianos that, you know, they feel like they're risking something. They don't want to damage somebody's instrument. And then, but then they don't have anything else that they can practice it on and, and figure out the ropes. Wayne, w w when you learned about voicing, has it, has it been in a, mostly in a, in a factory or, or sales setting or in your own workshop or with experimentation, stuff like that? I was lucky in the beginning uh, because I started working for <clears throat> doing um, service for Yamaha Canada Music uh, when they first started um, uh, having technicians from Japan. So every year they would send two of their top technicians uh, to do some training, but they also would do a tour and I would go out with them. Mm. So I had firsthand experience of watching them voice. Mm -hmm. And it was hardcore voicing, you know, these guys, they're ripping the hammer and they got the needle and they're pounding just that uh, it's not light voicing. It's really heavy duty and lots of like uh, and break, uh, sometimes breaking needles and pulling them out. And it's a lot of, a lot of work. Right. So that's how I. It's uh, sweaty and first. bloody as well. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that was, I was lucky because, uh, and then I would experience, I would uh, 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 um, experiment from what I learned in the next year. And I did that for, I think for five years in a row. Um, so I was lucky. And then, and then it was 10 years later that I got sent off to Japan. But I also did, when I toured uh, the factories around the world, I spent, you know, three days in Hamburg Steinway, uh, uh, a week in Zeiler. So I, I had all these other experiences that I didn't know that what I, what I was gaining at the time, just different t techniques, you know. And mm -hmm. I remember one, one guy at one point in the factory, he uh, he came in and uh, the other guys were laughing because he he had a voice until he was using, but he put it down, but he didn't want to see me and it was vice grips. So, so he was, <laughs> and he was laughing and he, he's pointed at me like this and, you know, yeah. so, uh, so, <laughs> but anyway, it was, uh, that's how I learned. So got it was it, just got uh, it. convenient. Yeah. Yeah. That is convenient. That helps out a lot. I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, Nancy, you, you said something in the chat here. You'd be interested in an interview with an audiologist, uh, or ENT doctor knowledge about what we should and shouldn't do. Have you explored this personally at all? Or is that something you're just kind of, you are looking for to sort of get into and, and understand, understand more? Oh, no, her audio is not working. Shoot. <laughs> I can't hear your audio, unfortunately. Oh, that's too bad. Um, but you can, uh, you can write in the chat, I suppose. But I'll say a couple things on that. And I, I think I'll take that suggestion. I think that would be somebody interesting. There's a couple tangential topics that I think we could cover um, that would be useful to a lot of piano technicians. One would be Alexander technique. Um, I know that uh, I think I heard it most from um, uh, the Brooklyn, Brooklyn piano tech uh, who wrote about tuning. Yeah, gosh. I, I, I'm having difficulty remembering. I've got so much in my head, it's hard to sort through it all. But um, uh, Dan Levitan, there you go. Dan Levitan, I think he uh, he got a chance to kind of study with someone who who taught Alexander Technique and found that very useful um, just in helping his posture when he's tuning and, and what type of procedures to use to kind of like take breaks and stretch and, and all this stuff. Uh, so I think that would be useful. And then, yeah, I think somebody in audiology would be, would be useful as well. Um, I used to have, I first, I first encountered, I think the first time I encountered this idea of protecting our ears while we tune was with Ken Eshte. Um, and, um, at Northwestern when I met him many years ago. And I believe he um, and his uh, and his partner there, Bill, Bill Schwartz, uh, were using ear protection. And he even maybe had some custom earplugs. And I actually ordered a, 
a custom pair of earplugs that were pretty fancy and you know they had a little filter that you could replace but they were kind of custom shaped to my ear uh i unfortunately lost them and then just kind of went back to using foam earplugs and and things like that but um that's a really great habit to get into that a lot of people uh don't and and then there's like a handful of people that get into that habit of using earplugs um and uh audiologists would know have a lot of different suggestions and and ideas around this it's it is certainly something we all have to be careful of i know uh a little i mean this isn't this is kind of a it's not sad per se but it's it's like a funny story about a piano technician that i that i know um who had has to use a hearing aid at this point which is you know it's fine i think he can tune uh with a hearing aid and it's fine but i was talking with the phone on him talking with him on the phone and uh and i said oh could you hand the phone over to your wife because i wanted to ask his, his wife something and he said actually i can't you're gonna have to call her directly because my uh my phone is bluetoothed into my hearing aid <laughs> So she won't be able to hear you. I didn't realize they had that technology nowadays. Uh, the the uh, I mean, it makes total sense. But yeah, so so nowadays the blue the Bluetooth speaker can just go directly to your to your uh, to your hearing aid, which is kind of fun. Um, but yeah, that that's a great topic. Any other topics too that anybody has ideas about? Um, feel free to pop them in there for me to go scouting and if you know folks that you want us to want to have join here um that that's also great too you can connect me with them and we can set up uh set up a session with anyone um another another point too about bringing people on so i had a again i'll share about this anonymously and again it's just just like the process of doing what i try to do here uh, I called, I was calling, just doing some research about a uh, about one of these online conventions I produced and ended up calling this woman. And, uh, and I said, uh, yeah, I'm, you know, just checking in, see how things are going. And she, basically she started to share, oh, well, you don't have enough women who participate in, you know, piano tech radio hour and piano technicians master classes and things like that. And, uh, and, uh, yeah, I was not surprised to hear that from her. Um, and I appreciated that she shared that openly, that that was one of a concern of hers. Um, and I shared back with her that, you know, there's been, there's, there's a handful of uh, um, women who have participated in, in these, in these sessions. Um, but there's also uh, more of them that have decided not to. So I, and and it's not out of like principle or anything like that. I, I don't think it's a it's a principle thing. I think they just kind of felt like I just got other things I'm doing or whatever. So just so everybody knows, I do do my best to reach out and make this a diverse um, diverse program. And on top of that, would just say you know if you're connecting with people that w w make these sessions more diverse, um, and you know you feel like they need a little bit of a nudge or something like that, then uh, then please go ahead and you know connect us again or, or give them a little poke and we'll uh we'll uh try to get more folks on here because uh, i'm all for that um yeah let's see here what else is uh what else is going on i am um i'm looking forward to upcoming uh convention dates here got a handful of people on board wayne is actually on board to do some teaching there um i'm talking with some some other folks who who should be on board soon um just talking about details uh, so that should be pretty fun up, upcoming here um and then uh i'm curious if anybody else wants to say hi here again i'll, I'll just gonna like pick on you guys and you don't have to respond or whatever if you don't want to but uh larry lobel has a uh has his photo there uh, I'm curious if you feel like chatting for a second. No need to come on camera, but if you want a voice in, that's cool, Larry. And if Larry doesn't take me up on it, I bet you Donnie, Donnie Bird would. How's it going over there, Donna? This is Larry. Like yeah. Oh, hey, hey, Larry, how's it going? Hi. <laughs> took me a while to figure out how to unmute myself. Oh, good, you did it. Well done. Yeah. So, what what are you up to? Video too. What are you up to right <laughs> now? Well, um, I didn't work a whole lot during the pandemic, but things are picking up again now. Um, nice. I'm 
officially retired, I had been the piano tech at the Green Music Center, which is a, a wonderful venue here locally. Um, Where are you located? Started, I'm in um, Petaluma, California. Okay. Uh, and this was a $120 million music venue that opened um, about 10 years ago. And I was hired on as the first um, concert tech there. That was sort of the cap of my career. Before that, I was just a field technician my whole career, uh, just working okay. in people's homes. And then I got that job and it was um, a wonderful opportunity. And um, it, it actually gave me uh, the opportunity to do what you were just talking about before, which was, I had my own piano laboratory there. Oh, wow. Uh, there are pianos of all grades from um, brand new Steinway concert grands down to um, beat up old spinets in practice rooms. Uh, so I got to um, try out a lot of things that I hadn't tried before. I learned a lot while I was on the job and um, it was a great cap to my career. So I retired three years ago from that job got it. because physically it was getting too difficult, but I still worked for them as an independent contractor. They did not hire someone to replace me and they seem to still want me to do it as long as I'm willing to. Got um, it. So I don't have a lot of the obligations I had, um, but I still get to uh, take care of all the pianos up there. Nice. You're like uh, friends with benefits at this point. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Yeah. Um, and it, uh, did you catch those last couple of sessions we did with the guitar maker and the, and the Puerto Rico session? Or did you miss I those? Was, I was there for... Um, Danny Kane top and ah, that cool. was interesting. I did nice. not make it to the Puerto Rican session. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, I, yeah. I'm intending to go take a look at it as soon yeah. as I get the chance. Check it out. That was really fun. Very interesting character. Ever since the 60s, she's been building this uh hotel slash piano center Steinway Society of Puerto Rico with six different pianos and a piano bar and she's an artist and the place is filled with sculptures and and paintings of hers and she's met people all the way from yo-yo ma to president obama to whatever like it's fascinating little world she's built there yeah very cool stuff i'd um, like to say a little about the um, the ptg convention if i may oh of course are you Ethan, are you a attending right now or did you have to skip it i i'm not attending um i had decided a few years back that my days of traveling by airplane are over mm. Um, for various reasons, personal and uh, otherwise. But um, the, I, I wanted to mention, in case people don't know, that they're actually uh, live streaming some of the classes from the That's convention. True. And uh, I think you, Ethan, have to take some of the credit for that happening. I think PTG has followed your lead. Nice. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I, I've, I've, I'm... Uh fully in in support of everything that they're doing and and uh we have an ecosystem here you know of of piano people and we all need to to support each other and and help each other grow and and uh, reinforce each other's strengths and you know help each other sharp our weaknesses and um you made me think of something that i don't know whether it's going to happen but i've always so i i mentioned i'm we spent a lot of time in New York and you talked about having your little laboratory to practice in. And that's probably one of my biggest difficulties with my team in New York city is they don't really have like a, a storefront or like a workshop, you know, real estate is pretty, pretty expensive. And even if you can get a place, it's going to be cramped and difficult to work with. So, and then there's going to be overhead. So I've avoided it, but I've often felt that in New York, um, there could be like a little bit of like a piano la lab library kind of thing because there's a ton of dedicated, you know, really smart technicians that are in the New York area. I thought you could kind of have a place where people would just come in and work on something, right? Maybe they'd have a little square footage that they could, you know, rent out, contribute to the, to the, 
rent or whatever and and go over and and work on their their thing and people could mix and mingle and maybe share tools and check them in and out and stuff like that but gosh that's ambitious right <laughs> of, all the, of all the other things that i'm doing i thought that could be cool but uh, but it's it is essential I, i'm so glad you had that opportunity and hope that more people do as well i think that um something like that could possibly be um, organized without too much difficulty, but it would require somebody willing to do the organizing. Yeah, that's me. I've been willing to do organizing on various things that I can only organize so many. <laughs> but uh, but thank you for that that comment, Larry. Appreciate that, and I'm glad that. Did you get a chance to to tune in to any of those live streams from the PTG? I did not myself. I haven't. I haven't done it. No. Cool. Yeah, I've got to check them out. I think the register. I think when I tried to register, it was closed. Um, but I'll check again and see if I can still, still get in on some of that. All right. Well, thanks. It's really great to chat with you, Larry, a little bit. Um, you too, Ethan. Take you off the spotlight and, uh, okay. and thank everyone uh, else for joining again today. Um, it's been fun. Uh, great to see you here again in the next couple of weeks. We'll have a couple more uh, kind of guitar and, and string instrument, violin related sessions. So that should be pretty fun. And uh, we'll, uh, other than that, you know, we got our links in the chat as usual. Give us some feedback or sign up for whatever suits you. And uh, in the end, we'll, we'll see you next time. Thanks a lot. Catch you later. Thank you so much for giving us an hour of your time. Remember that you can catch us live online every Saturday at 2 p.m. Eastern time. That's right. Go to pianotechradio.com to register so you can interact live and ask questions of our guests. See you next week.